Yeah, okay, great. Uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation to speak at this seminar. Today, I'm going to be talking about my work on the integrability of the conformal loop ensemble. And this work is joined with Sun Sun. So the conformal loop ensemble is closely related to statistical physics models, such as the Ising model. The Ising model is a lattice model of magnetism where each site has either plus spin or a minus spin. And if my neighbors are all plus, then I'm probably also going to be plus. Sites want to be similar to their neighbors. Um, okay, so this has a temperature parameter T. When T is low, um, you get these huge clumps of pluses and minuses. And when T is high, you get an essentially disordered system. And what's really interesting is that the critical temperature, you get this very fractal kind of configuration, which is self-similar um, at all scales. So if you look at the spin field, that is the function on the plane taking values plus and minus one uh, corresponding to the spins, and you take a scaling limit, it is known that the scaling limit is a, a conformal field theory. Uh, but today we want to instead focus on the interfaces between the plus and minus spins. So this gives us a random collection of loops. And in the scaling limit, this, these, this random collection of loops is supposed to converge to the conformal loop ensemble. The conformal loop ensemble was introduced by Sheffield and shown to be canonical by Sheffield and Werner. Um, it has a parameter kappa between eight and eight, uh, which roughly speaking controls for the roughness of the loops. So this diagram here is a simulation of an, a critical easing model. And these very fat loops that, origin, that arise here are going to be um, the CLE with kappa is equal to three. So CLE is closely re related to sham lofner evolution. Uh, the, the interfaces are uh, locally absolutely continuous with respect to SLE. Now, when kappa is between eighters and four, you get these simple loops that do not like touch themselves. But when kappa is between four and eight, you get these self-touching loops. CLE is conformally invariant. And what that means is if I sample a CLE on the unit disk, and then I apply a Mobius transformation like the one shown here, then the resulting collection of loops is still going to be CLE. Okay, one reason why CLE is really interesting is because it's a scaling limit of uh, random uh, when statistical physics models, for instance, the critical easing model, uh, critical percolation, and the uh, FK easing model. A major open problem is to show that uh, a broader class of uh, these statistical physics models, such as the FK random cluster model, and the ON loop model also converge to CLE. Okay, so today the quantity I'm interested in is a three point nesting statistic of CLE on the sphere. So informally, we want to define the CLE nesting function phi as follows. So we let phi of z be the number of loops surrounding the point z. And then this gives us a random function phi and we want to understand the joint law of phi at three different points, say. And this doesn't make rigorous sense because phi is going to be infinite almost everywhere. So instead, what we can do is as follows. We fix three points. And for each point, I look at the outermost loop that separates this point from the other two points. So this red loop uh, surrounding the red point is the outermost loop separating it from the blue and green point. Now for each loop and point, there's a quantity called the conformal radius of the loop viewed from the point. And this is pretty close to the uh, distance between the loop and the point. So the heuristic we want to use is that um, if your conformal radius is small, then heuristically you have fewer loops around this point. And so in this way, we want to use the conformal radius as a proxy for the nesting function. So, uh, so let's look at the joint moment of the three conformal radii with these exponents lambda j's. So the dependence on the points zj, z1, z2, and z3 is actually trivial in the sense that um, it's very explicit and is in terms of this product of distances here. And the reason why this is the case is because the conformal loop ensemble is conformally invariant. And so for any three points on the plane, I can map them to any other three points on the plane using a Mobius transform. So this factor here is easy to deduce. What's difficult though is obtaining this constant here. 
which only depends on the lambdas. And this constant is what I will call the three-point nesting statistic of CLE. Okay. So the theorem that we proved relates this three-point nesting statistic for CLE to a conformal field theory. There's an important and well-studied family of conformal field theories called the generalized minimum models. And these include, for instance, the critical easing model CFT, uh, which I mentioned at the start of this talk. So the three-point correlation function for this uh, general minimum models is called the imaginary DOZZ formula. And this was um, introduced by physicists using methods that are similar to analytic continuation. Uh, more recently, physicists proposed that this CLE three-point nesting statistic should agree with the imaginary DOZZ formula. And they ran some simulations and they checked that this was indeed plausible. So in joint work with Sun Sun, we proved that this is indeed the case. Uh, the three-point nesting statistic of CLE indeed agrees with the imaginary DOZZ formula. And this establishes a connection between CLE and the generalized minimal models. So we proved it for this regime when kappa is between eight thousand and four. This is a simple loop regime for CLE. Uh, for the non-simple loop regime, uh, where kappa is between four and eight, this is work in progress. Okay, so this gives some useful context for the theorem. Now I want to present the actual formula that we obtained. So the three-point nesting statistic for CLE is equal to this quantity over here. So the alphas here, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, are just reparameterizations of the lambdas. The numerator is going to be this factorized um, form here. It's in terms of these elementary functions, which I omitted. And uh, these are not too important. They're like some normalization things. The denominator is what's really interesting. And this is the so-called DOZZ formula written down here. The DOZZ formula involves these epsilon functions which are not elementary. They can only be defined using, for instance, an integral expression such as this one over here. Yeah. Um. Okay. So this is, the, these um, epsilon functions often arise in con liberal conformal field theory, uh, which makes sense because our argument is going to pass through uh, liberal quantum field theory, conformal field theory. So I'm going to give a high level argument. Our theorem was only about random curves, these random interfaces that are closely connected to statistical physics, but our proof in actually uses random surfaces as well. So in our proof, we sample a conformal loop ensemble on top of a random surface called Liouville quantum gravity. And then we cut along the three outermost loops around three points, and that gives us four surfaces here. And each of the pieces in this picture here can be understood via something called Liouville conformal field theory. And consequently, uh, we can then understand the loops better. And that gives our main result. So I just want to say a bit about Liouville quantum gravity and Liouville conformal field theory now. So what is Liouville quantum gravity? This is a model of random surfaces introduced by the physicist Polyakov in the 1980s in the context of string theory. If you have a one-dimensional string in space that evolves over time, then that traces out a two-dimensional surface in space-time, which is why string theory might lead you to want to study random surfaces. So concretely, let's say you have 1,000 triangles and you assemble them randomly into a disk configuration. And that gives us something called a random planar map. Now you can do something called a conformal embedding to embed this random planar map in the unit disk. So here is a simulation. Uh, this random planar map induces a random geometry on this unit disk as follows. So let's say I give each triangle an area of one. So here where the geometry is very sparse, uh, you have a very small area. And here where the geometry is very dense, you have a large area. If you send the number of triangles to infinity, then in the limit, what you get here is going to be something called liberal quantum gravity. That's a random geometry on the unit disk. So liberal quantum gravity can be described by a random field called the liberal field, which says how large the surface is at each point. So here, where the geometry is dense, the field is going to be very large, as shown by the red color. 
And here, where the geometry is not dense, the field is very negative. So this liberal field phi uh, is described by what is called liberal conformal field theory. And the endpoint correlation functions of LCFT, liberal conformal field theory, describes a joint law of this function phi at n different points. Okay, so the, uh, in other words, the correlation functions of LCFT describe the random surfaces that arise in liberal quantum gravity. Okay, so let's go back to this high level proof idea. First of all, the first step is this result that is joined with Nina Holden and Sun Sun. On the left-hand side, you have an, a liberal quantum gravity sphere and you independently sample a CLE on top of it. Now you look at the outermost loops around three marked points and you cut along these loops and that gives you four surfaces. And what's really surprising is that if you condition on the boundary lengths um, of these surfaces, then these four surfaces are independent. So this, this, um, this notion of a quantum zipper was introduced by uh, Sheffield and Duplante Miller Sheffield and in the setting of infinite volume random surfaces and generalized this finite volume setting uh, by myself, Holden and Sun. So we have this diagram and we have a bunch of surfaces. Like we have this sphere, we have these disks and we have this pair of pants type surface. And in fact, all of these surfaces can be understood. This sphere for instance is understood via the LCFT three point correlation function which is actually the DOZD formula from before. And this was computed by Kupiainen, Rose, and Vargas. Um, for these disks, uh, they are understood using the LCFT one point correlation function on the disk, computed by myself, Gyeong Vemi, and Sun Sun vigorously. And this finally, this uh, pair of pants topology surface is, can be understood by something called the mating of trees. So in this picture, on the left hand side, we have an LQG sphere and we have a CLE. On the right-hand side, we have a bunch of LQG surfaces. And the point is that all of these surfaces here can be understood using uh, LCFT and other methods. So by combining this information, we can understand the CLE very well, which gives us our main theorem. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.